In this Future Cities Africa episode, presented in partnership with the Greater Tigerberg Partnership, we dive into the critical topic of social development in Belleville. We explore the unique challenges facing this community and how initiatives like the MESS program are tackling issues like homelessness and poverty. We discuss the importance of community engagement and collaboration, the holistic support provided to those in need, and the inclusive approaches being fostered to ensure everyone has access to support services. We also look at how these programs measure their impact and success. My guests today are Anel Erasmus, Fundraising and Marketing Manager at MES, Mold, Empower and Surf Cape Town, and Michelle Lamprechts, Social Development Manager at VRCID. Anel and Michelle, welcome and thank you for being on the show. Let's get right into it. Can you share insights into the specific social development challenges facing the Belleville community and how initiatives like the MES program are addressing these challenges? What are the key focus areas and objectives of these initiatives? The whole of South Africa is actually urbanizing quite rapidly. Um, 63% of South Africans live in urban areas. And the statistics will rise to 71% by 2030. So this has a huge effect on not only Belleville, but each city in South Africa. A recent study done in Cape Town by MES, our partner U-Turn and Kulisa Streetscapes, we found that there are approximately 14,000 homeless people living on our streets. Now, um, establish systems providing housing, employment, education, healthcare, and psychological support are not able to cope with this influx of people coming into our city. It also leads to unsafe and unclean city spaces. And with this study we did in just after 2020, it's estimated that uh, the public in Cape Town is giving out approximately two, 286 million rand in cash to the homeless people living on the streets. So unfortunately, this cash maintains drug addictions and undermines the good works that organizations such as MES is trying to do. But in MES, we believe that we want to create thriving urban communities with access to effective and efficient pathways out of poverty and homelessness. We do our wires. We believe change is possible for every person who wants to build a thriving life and society anchored in Christ. So we exist to drive essential change aimed at solving systemic poverty problems and homelessness. So what we do at VRCID, part of our organization within my team, we work with our homeless and the destitute within the Paro Belleville area. And so the services and the research refer to from and now in terms of MES and the workings and partnerships. We were also part of that collaboration and um, did much of the work as our field workers one of their core mandates is to build a relationship with these people to get their lived experiences and feedback. Community engagement and collaboration are often crucial for the success of social development initiatives. How does the Belleville community actively participate in and contribute to programs like the MESS program? And what role do partnerships between government, NGOs and local stakeholders play in driving social change? What we have created in Belleville and also other northern suburbs of Cape Town is we established what we call the Joint Operation Committee, JOC in short. And this JOC committee consists out of MPOs like MES. We've got the VRZ, Neighborhood Watches, the City of Cape Church members. Everybody comes together at least once a month and this JOC will then discuss issues going on in that particular neighborhood. If there's certain hotspots that needs a specific focus or we can see problems are rising here or homeless are setting up camp over here, that's how we communicate as a community with each other and then addressing 
the problem together instead of living or working in our own little silos. So that is basically just how we make sure we have participation between all the different organizations. So the role between partnerships are extremely important. The Greater Tigerberg Partnership that we have, the BR SIT Partnership, it's very important that each partner knows exactly what the, the problem is and why it is, why homelessness is happening and recurring and what solutions are we going to find together to solve this problem. And also another thing for us is really to educate the public on how to give responsibly. So relationship with um, churches, going to schools, talking to children and start educating them from a young age on on what is homelessness, how do we deal with it, and how we do, how does everyone contribute in a holistic, uplifting manner instead of, you know, just decreasing and seeing every street person as a danger or, you know, things we rather would look away than, than to assist. Firstly, the role that government, NGOs, and partnerships play. It's important to note that everyone has their own mandate of operation and everyone has their own specialized skill set. So what we've done in our community and how we promote partnership and collaboration is that we have these jock meetings. So it's joint operational committee meetings. And so everyone that works with social upliftment within the area, whether that is the Department of Social Development, the organizations under the Greater Tiger Book Partnership, the NGOs, the nonprofit organizations that um, kind of help, or even it goes as far as it, including businesses and community leaders. It has representations of different board members. Um, and so it's such a large basket of sectors that come along and we all sit together. All of us consider each other's policies and mandates when we look at what we can do and where can we fill each other's gaps and needs to meet the needs of our greater partnerships and our client systems at the end of the day, which is our call. How we do this is through our job meetings. How we do this is, as um, I now referred, is our Give Dignity campaigns. We have a few awareness campaigns in terms of provide people with resources instead of money to, to provide upliftment. And we do that together. Um, it is partnership-wide. All the organizations share the same passion in terms of the Tiger Bird partnership to reach this commonality in our goals for our client systems. And therefore, partnership for us is equally important. Addressing homelessness and poverty is a complex and multifaceted issue. How does the MESS program provide holistic support to individuals and families in need in Belleville? And what range of services and resources are offered to promote long-term empowerment and stability? So at MESS, we have a, a four-phase approach, which we... Um, I have established and worked on for over 38 years. So we believe our recipe is working. And to ensure that we look holistically at a person, you first have to meet them on the ground where they're at. Um, so we call that our phase one, our outreach and relief. And this is where um, the Greater Tigerberg Partnership, the VR SIT field workers, the city of Cape Town are really also our hands and feet where we meet people um, in the tents, they stay actually reaching out, finding out who they are, why they're there, and then telling us about the services that MENS offers. So the, the second step for us then is to try and get that person to our homeless support center, which is a day center. And then of course that connects to our shelters. And this is the first basic step to get somebody just one step closer off the street. After this, we have what we call our second phase is the change readiness phase. And here a lot of uh, psychosocial work is being done, counseling, rehabilitation services. Um, homelessness does go hand in hand with a lot of trauma, substance abuse. And if these issues are not addressed, we cannot move a person off the streets. 
And then after our change readiness phase, we enter our third phase. It's our work readiness phase. And here we basically just teach somebody again how to show up eight o'clock at work, be able to work an eight-hour shift and not quitting in between. And all those steps, again, um, alongside work, social workers, occupational therapists. So it's a very intense professional phase, which is very costly, but it works. And we believe if we want to do it holistic, we, we need to deliver these services. And then our final phase is our reintegration. And by that time, a person has proven that they, they are off their substances, they can hold a job, we find alternative accommodation because they need to move out of the shelter or any mess accommodation that we offer. And that also goes with reintegrating back into a community, family, and, and just normal life, like most of us know it. So, so those, those are the steps we take to ensure we have a success rate with our beneficiaries. In terms of the Greater Tigerbank Partnership, alongside MESS, one of the core priorities of the social development team of your CID is field work. Our people champion with those that live on the streets, get them motivated for the change, inspire them to make use of these services that MESS and our partners provide. And then we provide catchment and support services within that, whether that is support for reunification services, doing ID documents, counseling, doing group work and development with them, therapeutic services. So our organization assists further to build out when a client, when an individual is ready to take on this large phase process of reintegration, going from living on the street to actually getting into a community on an independent, self-actualized manner. We all try very hard to support each other so that the client can also see that, see the value in asking for help and see the value in taking hands um, to make a difference. Sustainable social development requires collaboration between various sectors and stakeholders. How does the Belleville community foster inclusive approaches to social development that prioritize diversity, equity and inclusion? What efforts are being made to ensure that marginalized groups have equal access to support services and opportunities? In terms of sustainable social development services that is required with the various sectors, it is important for us to always foster and prioritize individualism and with that equality. It's a very strange concept to understand, but everyone's journey to go from being homeless to being reintegrated does not look the same. It's not a tailor-made process. So what we do to promote and foster inclusivity is that we ensure our clients' voices are heard, whether that means it is our, our organization or MESS or the Department of Social Development or the multiple NGOs and MPOs that work within the area. All of us have the same core objective. It is integrity, it is upliftment, and it is support. And so that is the values in which we actionize our work. It is how we approach our clients and it's how we teach them how to better themselves in terms of how the world sees them as well. To get to that point, the efforts that we make to ensure this is a lot of community awareness. If there's a complaint from a community member or from a business to say, there are people sleeping at night in front of my shop, they are making a mess, you know, this and this and this is the complaints that they, we would receive, we would do twofold. One would be to approach those individuals to explain to them the impact that their behaviors has on the businesses and the opportunity for the businesses to collaborate with others to earn an income, to grow, and the image of the organization. While at the same time approaching the organization to say, understand that this is the lived experience of these people. This is what they may or may not know. What you could assume to be a natural instinct may not be that for everyone. Um, and so we try to create that awareness on an individual level. We do so with our community work. We do so with platforms like this to kind of identify to the world, not just in our area, but across from our areas, is that fostering independence and inclusivity, fostering 
a world where we can focus on the marginalized and, and uplift those people. We need to look at the bigger picture, but the smaller picture is equally important. I can also just add to that on the 20th of April here in Cape Town, we started our talks on the green paper for homelessness. And um, we actually took some homeless beneficiaries with us so their voices can be heard and that the, the green paper that will eventually turn into the white paper, um, that it's actually, that we hear what their problems and their issues and their challenges are and not what we think um, you know, the problem or the challenges are. So we really try and always have their voice in whatever we do. So to make sure we are really addressing the issues and not the perceived issues we have as public or just the individual. Measuring the impact of social development programs is essential for assessing effectiveness and guiding future efforts. How does the MESS program and other social development initiatives in Belleville evaluate the impact and success? And what key outcomes or metrics are used to measure progress and inform programmatic decisions? At MES, we have annual strategic meetings we, where we look at our business plans and typically um, doing the SWOT analysis. Again, we, at each program, we have questionnaires that our beneficiaries fill out. So we, we look at our track record, see if, if we are making an impact, if we are making a difference. If um, we see something's not working anymore, do we change? Do we drop it? Maybe there's new trends, new partnerships. Um, and I can tell you since COVID, we have had so many strategic changes. And the good thing about it was really all the partnerships that came out. It's very, if you are not for profit working on your own, you're not going to get very far. So we are really blessed and lucky with all the partners we have, such as Greater Tigerberg, the VR sets, other NGOs that we work with. So that is basically how we do it annually. And then the, the metrics that we use, the four-phase approach that MES has, for every um, beneficiary we work with, there's an enter and an exit criteria. And a beneficiary is being measured according to, to these criteria, And so successful impact for us would be when that beneficiary is actually getting the tick on, on the exit criteria and moving on to the next phase. And then of course, we've got quantitative and qualitative uh, data that we capture. Um, so we, we do keep all of this in mind when planning and seeing if what we do, are we doing it? Are we making a real difference? And definitely comparing with other NGOs doing the same work as us, making sure we speak the same language, um, we're addressing the same problems. And if, if we mention something, and this is where the partnerships are so important, is that um, we all understand that we're talking about the same thing and not thinking, oh, you're giving soup, but I'm giving a hot dog, but to have a, a universal language when it comes to homelessness, because we found that currently there's just too many different ideas and visions and not all of it is working. So the partnerships just help us to, to get it all together again. And yeah, so we are, we are fortunate in this time that we working with the homeless problem and finding really sustainable solutions. We are very excited about the future. In terms of measuring the impact of the social development programs in our areas, VRSIT's core mandate in terms of that is the experience of the people who are still homeless or those that have entered and exited the programs. Part of my field workers' jobs is to ensure that they do post-reunification assessments, which essentially means after the client has gone through Mess and Newton's four-phase approaches, they are back with their families or they're living on their own. They got a job outside of our organizations. We follow up to make sure, are you still okay? 
um, you know, do you still need some support? And that's a very good way for us to determine is our services effective or not long term. What we also do in terms of metrics with our client systems is we ask the opinions. We, as we are said, our workers, that partnerships with integrated Tigerberg has fostered such open, authentic relationships with our owners in the area. They have the freedom to come to us and say, you know, we did X, Y, and Z last year. It really helped us. Can we do it again this year? Or an example of how we do this is our sleep readiness program that we partner in terms of MESS and your SIT and the Greater Partnership, where we open our shelters and we open our safe spaces to accommodate more sleepers at night when it is as extremely cold. And we have clients that would come to us to say that really helped us last year. Can we do that again? And then it's us as partnerships will collaborate and get together and throw as much resources as we can to that. Further than just our clients um, and our partnerships all having our own individual ways of measuring success within our compliance and our core mandates, what we also do is what, what we get excited about is our research, you know, um, I now refer to research done with streetscapes and U-turn. And so the organizations, the partnerships within the area try to do this mass research project about every two years. And um, so about every two years and what that thing entails at the end of the day is speaking with the organizations, speaking with staff, speaking with client systems, those that have been on the street for a long time, those coming from other areas to our area because the services are as effective. We have good conversations, we have strategic um, research questions that we ask and that also forms how we are planning for the time going forward, what are the needs and that also informs to us largely how should we meet or, or essentially evaluate what these need, needs need to meet. Ladies, in closing, if I gave you a magic wand that you can do anything with, what will you change right now to fast track the achievement of the objectives and visions for your programs? The one thing I would like to change is the perception of um, government, the public, business, um, just whole of society that to solve homelessness is really intense, extreme um, problem that needs professional services to have a holistic outcome. And then my second wish would just be for the public to embrace and support responsible giving. What I would do if I had a magic wand for this objectives that we have for our community, it would ultimately be the quickest thing would be funding. It would be being able to have the type of financial resources for us to, to support these organizations. An example of that would be if we have more housing options, we can take more clients from the streets. If we are able to support more substance use rehabilitation centers, we are able to get more clients into that services faster to get them out. If we are able to collaborate with organizations and create partnerships where they can fully employ our clients um, after they've gone through their processes, there's so many things that can benefit all the services that we render. And at the end of the day, for an organization like us that have such an overview of many organizations that do, do good work, there's a lot of need. And a lot of these needs, we have all the skills, we have the capacity, we have the, the knowledge, we have the willingness, the, the drive to run all of these things and make that full-scale impact. But at the end of the day, we do need the resources, whether that is someone giving us a house or someone giving us the money to buy one. If we had the magic wand resources, um, I think that we will be able to make a really big impact on the homelessness and the awareness of what it takes to make that difference. A big thank you to the Great Tigerberg Partnership, Anel Erasmus and Michelle Lamprechts for this insightful conversation on Future Cities Africa.